Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, so I'm in the shading tab. I've already got my object loaded and selected. I've got the viewport shading enabled and I've got a principled BSDF plugged into a material output. Next, I'm going to press Shift A to search for a hue saturation value node. That's this one here. I'm going to plug that into the base color. I'm going to change the saturation to 0.9 and leave everything else as it is. I'm then going to uh, press Shift A again to search for a color ramp. And I'm going to plug the color from that into the color of the hue saturation node. I'm going to move this first one about maybe a quarter of the way in. And the second one about the same from the other side. I'm going to change this setting to HSL and leave this one to near. Then I'm going to change the colors here. For this first color, I'm going for a hue of 0.125, saturation of 0.83, and a value of 1. The second one's going to be very, very close. We're going to put it at 0.125, and then 0.85 for the saturation, and the value again at 1. So we've got a big yellow blob right now. Next, I am going to load a noise texture and a texture coordinate. I'm going to plug the object socket into the vector of the noise texture. I'm going to change the scale to 0.5 the detail to 10.5 and leave the roughness at 0.5 and the distortion at 0. The factor from this is going to get plugged into the vector of a wave texture that I haven't loaded yet. So let's get that. The factor is also going to go from this noise texture straight into the color ramp. Now I'm going to add a bump node down here. Plug the normal into the normal. And I'm going to bring the factor from the wave texture into the height of the bump. Okay. So for the wave texture, I'm going to change the distortion to 1 and leave everything else the same. The bump, I'm going to drop the strength to 0 0.025. And then in my principle to be SDF, I am going to change the metallic to 1. Specular to 0.15, roughness to 0.15. Going to change the anisotropic rotation to 0.777. Not actually sure that made a difference, but we could always increase this if we need that to change. Um, Brushing tint, I'm increasing to 1. Clear coat roughness to 0.1, although I haven't actually added any clear coat, so it probably won't make a difference. And I think everything else is going to be the same as it is. 
Yes, so there's your full shader layout. And let's send that to render and see how it goes. I'm using a thousand samples. You can obviously change that and use different settings if you would prefer. Now it's not quite what I expected, so I'm going to close that down briefly and I just need to double check a couple of things. Okay, so the bands in the wave texture are fine, but I want to change this setting to diagonal and this setting to saw. And what that's going to do for me is basically give me the look as if lots of this gold leafing has been layered on top of each other. So it's got the texture of gold leafing. Let's send that back out to render. And there we go, much better. So remember, this isn't about creating a gold object. It's the fact that a leaf, a um, very thin layer of gold metal has been randomly applied to the surface. So if you have a textured surface, this is going to look as if the leafing has been applied to that, like a picture frame. Okay, that's it for this one. See you next time.